Now before we jump into today's video, I have an announcement to make and that is I now have a second channel and it's going to be a clips channel. I've joined the trend and it does what it says on the tin. So go check it out, link down below guys and get subscribed. If you are subscribed to this channel and want to see more content about myself, you might see some gems on there you may have never seen before or that might be from our Twitch live stream. So go check those out, I'll leave a link down below. But with that said, we are here for some more Williams Road to Glory and today we're at the Belgian Grand Prix at Spa and we are taking an engine penalty straight off the bat I'm gonna break that news right now because we're not gonna make it we've got five more races after this or six more and we're not gonna make it on our current allocation so we're gonna to have to take a penalty and take some pain in this race so hopefully you guys like the sound of that starting from the back of the grid so yeah if you're going to enjoy this episode like subscribe and as always the previous episode will be linked up in the top right so go check that one out if you haven't done so already and let's get into the episode so here we are picking up where we left off in the previous episode and that is entering a season break. We return from that season break and nothing happened except the fact we have one major downforce upgrade on the front end of the car so we'll see that in a moment. This weekend though we have rain expected for the race so uh, it's going to be wet all the way through intermediates pretty much the whole race. In terms of the upgrade it was a major one on the aerodynamics for the front end of the car but it hasn't really changed much in terms of you know where we are relative to Red Bull and Mercedes. We also have two more on the way so a rear downforce major upgrade and a minor one on the chassis for the brakes. Hopefully they both arrive by the end of this episode. And along with that, we're going to hopefully add another upgrade at the end of this video. So stay tuned for that. I'm hoping for it to be an ultimate one, but we'll see what happens. It depends how many R&D points we pick up in this episode. We jump into practice and I did this practice session with the old power unit, the one that's uh, going to get replaced. And it was a pretty decent session. We scored a decent amount of R&D points and the car was working well. I love Spa. It's a great circuit. It's probably my joint favorite along with Japan. And things were looking pretty positive after practice. But now before qualifying, we are going to go ahead and change the components. Now you can see on the ICE, the internal combustion engine, the turbocharger, and especially the control electronics, those three components are pretty worn. And even the ones right now that are green by color, they're kind of in that 45 to 50-ish percent range. So they're not exactly fresh, they don't go by the color. So I am gonna go ahead and put on the third and final component for the ICE, the MGUK, the MGUH, and also the turbocharger. But we have to take an engine penalty for an extra energy store and an extra control electronics. So yeah, it is where it is. Hopefully now we should be able to get to the end of the season with no more penalties. And we'll use some older engines for practice and stuff to keep the mileage down. But pretty much with that said, after practice, we move the qualifying just to pretty much confirm those penalties to make sure they register. And I'm not going to make the same mistake as in the past and change components again. So we're going to run the race with this engine. So. We leave the pits, we get confirmation of the grid penalty, and yeah, pretty much we're just going to go full send in the race in the rain and see what happens. So there you go, there's your lot for practice and qualifying. We're now going to move into the race here for the Belgian Grand Prix, and we're going to see if we can try and fight back through the field. Welcome along then to the Belgian Grand Prix, the race that gave us the maiden victory for the Jordan team in 1998, and in the same team, the phenomenal debut of a young Michael Schumacher. There's always something special around one of the many corners of this fan favorite circuit. Spa Francorchamps then, a 4.35 mile tour of the Ardennes countryside with nine right corners and 10 left corners, giving us a grand total of 19. Average lap speeds in the dry can reach about 145 miles per hour, but without a significant improvement in these conditions, we won't be seeing anything like that today. Anthony Davidson joins me again for the race today. Let's talk about Martinez. As ever, the threat of unreliability is never far away, and indeed they'll be starting out of position today due to a power unit component change. So it's going to be a difficult task to move forward from there. But on the bright side, at least those fresh components can help them maintain the power they need to come through the pack. I expect to see them take a more aggressive approach today to make up for the compromise start. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas. The fin starts from pole position and Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Gasly, Albon, Carlos Sainz, and Norris, Ricardo, Perez, Russell, and Daniel Kvyat, Verstappen, Leclerc, Lance Stroll, and Ocon, De Vries, Magnussen, Roman Grosjean, 
and Antonio Giovinazzi, Matsushita and Martinez. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out. Then let's see who can prevail today. Here we are then on the grid for the Belgian Grand Prix. We start from P20 and last place. And of course, we've got it all to do. And we need to try and fight back with the new power unit in the back of our car. Now, it's not all bad news because the reason I've chosen this track for the engine penalty, as I've mentioned before, is because it is a power circuit. Overtaking is possible, and that's going to be the plan here today. Strategy is also going to play a big, big part. So, in terms of strategy, we've got a one-stop planned on the Inters. It's going to be uh, rain all the way through. And fuel-wise, I've gone for 0.5 negative because I feel like we're not going to need the extra fuel. Um, having said that, fuel saving will still be difficult because ultimately we're full throttle for quite a while during the lap. Now, there's two options here strategy-wise. We could one-stop it. We could attempt the no-stop. It entirely depends on traffic and how we kind of get through the field and make the overtake. So let's see what happens. Let's jump into the action. 22 laps ahead of us, and I'm very much looking forward to it. So let's jump into the Belgian Grand Prix. Right, here we go. The lights are on. Let's see if we can get a good start. Lights sound away we go. Easy does it. Not bad. Pretty decent start, actually. Quite a lot of spray, though. I can't see a thing. Down towards turn one, Grosjean moves right across me there in the break zone. Luckily, I kind of expected it, so I went in quite cautious. But look at this, we're side by side here with uh, Nick De Vries. We'll let him get ahead. I don't really want to go side by side through here. As we go up through Eau Rouge and Radion for the first time. Oh my god, there's contact up ahead. We've had to take to the escape road, and that's going to be an illegal overtake. As there was some contact there between Grosjean and De Vries. We're going to have to give these places back, but this is now going to work out horribly for us as now multiple cars try to get by and just like that we're back down to last place i'm going to try and re-challenge matsushita here but that was not ideal that could have been a massive collision at high speed there over the top of radion luckily we managed to avoid it we're going to try and go around the outside of uh, giovanazzi here just kind of putting the throttle on slowly the vries in front so i can't really commit to this overtake fully but we managed to get ahead and make our way up to p18 so We've gained a couple of places anyways. Let's see if we can make up a few more. I'm going to stay on board here because I know for a fact that AI do not use any ERS on the back straight. So I'm going to plan to drain my battery. I think the Vries may have wing damage looking at the pace and looking at Grosjean's pulling away. So we need to clear the Dutchman as soon as possible in the Aston Martin here. If I can just get the exit and the run through here, that would be perfect. There we go. Lovely stuff. And now we're just going to hit the ERS. And look at the speed difference. You can tell the, ER, the ERS just doesn't get used by the AI. You can see some left front wing damage there on DeVries' car. And we're through. Oh my goodness, man. It's going to be a warning for track limits. Not good. Not exactly what you want on the first lap of the race. But nonetheless, at the end of said first lap, we're up to P17. So we have gained a couple of places as DeVries peels off into the pit lane. Let's see if we can get past Grosjean here. I'm going to stay on board a bit longer because... I feel like Grosjean could be a bit slow heading through Eau Rouge and Radion. Look how much we gained through there. And he's got the fry engine in the back of that car, so he should be um, pretty vulnerable. Just need to make sure I get it hooked up through here. Little confidence lift through there just to make sure we keep the momentum going. And now we're going to use the battery to get past Grosjean here. We're going to go to the outside. This should be done before the corner on the brakes. And there we go, we're through. Right, now they, the race begins. So we've got past the kind of alphas and the house cars, the back markers, and now we need to get past the midfield cars. Pretty close to Lance Stroll here. Nice run through turn one. This could be a similar move to the one before. Let's see if we can hook this up. A lot faster through there this time. Much less of a lift. Are we close enough though to get Stroll? I think we are. We're just starting to reel him in on the brakes here. Up the inside. Got to leave some room. But we go on the outside of the left-hander and make that move stick. So we're now P15. We've got Verstappen up ahead having a pretty poor race. Magnussen running P13 for Haas. What a great race for him so far. Verstappen, Magnussen battling here. Thought Max was going to go on the outside, but he can't get past the Haas, which is very surprising. We've got a massive train of cars ahead, by the way. I'm not sure how this is going to work out. It's going to be interesting as we set another personal best. We've got a five-car breakaway looking at the minimap. So we've got two Mercedes and two Red Bulls breaking away. 
and a McLaren. And then there's a battle for the front of the midfield. You can see on the minimap, they're heading up to a route. So there's just a massive train of cars. So um, very much, even though there's no DRS, it's kind of like a DRS train, basically. Everyone's just getting a slipstream off everyone. So there's going to be very little slipstream effect. So um, we may have to consider options here in terms of strategy. Let's see what happens though. Verstappen, again, looking for the move on Magnussen. They're going to go side by side into late comm. So we're going to wait and see what happens here. I might be able to get a position or two for free here. It looks like Max though has got that one done quite convincingly. We're going to keep the pressure on though. See if I can get past Magnussen. Down towards Rivage. I thought about it. Up the inside there. Didn't quite work though. I feel like I want to get Magnussen here. So we're going to turn the engine up. And try and close the gap. We're going to see if we can lunge him into the bus stop chicane. And that would give us P14. Slight confidence lift in traffic there. But there we go. We've got the run. Up the inside we go. Magnuson trying to fire back on the inside. But we're going to get the better line. And there we go. P14. Now this is going to get interesting. We've arrived at the back of the train. And there's a lot of cars in it. So I'm not really sure what to do with this. Already I'm thinking undercut, it could be a good option. We could potentially undercut almost all of these cars. I can see one of the Alpha Tires has pulled away out front. So that tells me maybe someone in this train is struggling with damage and is holding everyone up. But no one can quite make the move. So I'm going to consider my options here. But we may have to go for an early stop for an undercut to try and get past all this traffic. Whoa, that was a bit too close for comfort there. Let's not do that. That's going to overheat my tyres like crazy. The AI are really slow in these slow speed corners. Like extra slow. I'm tempted to have a little dive, but I am thinking pit stop. I think maybe next lap in fairness. I'll check my tyre wear now. 18% on the rears. I mean, we could go to the end as well. That's another option. But I feel like we need clean air for that to happen so that I can push. And I'm not really getting that right now. So I am thinking an early stop. I might pit this lap, to be fair. A new strategy is available on the MFD. What's this, then? Lap 13. Hmm. So the game already wants me to go longer. But I'm thinking this lap, to be honest. I think I'm going to just call it now and go for it. I think we can undercut all of these cars. I think I've got more pace than this. I reckon there's at least another second pace-wise. Maybe more that I can find. And I'm estimating the AI to pit around lap 11 or so. I don't know. Um, do I pit this lap? That's the real question here. I think I am. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to send it and pit this lap. Why not? We may as well go for it. I can't see myself overtaking these guys, unfortunately. They're really slow here, though. These slow speed corners. You can see how early they break. I have to be very careful to not run to the back of. But we're going to send it into the pit lane and go for this undercut. Crucial phase of the race. But this is for the championship. We need to keep our hopes alive and, you know, keep some points in our championship lead because right now we're not in the points. So this is going to be a gamble. We should be able to make it to the end. The question is, will we have, you know, tyres that are competitive enough at the end of the race? I'm hoping to catch the Alpha Tauri that's in the Kemmel straight right now. That's what I'm aiming for with this undercut. So let's see if I'm being a bit too ambitious or whether that's realistic. We're about to find out. So fresh inters. We're not pitting anymore. We'll be struggling for Tara at the end a little bit. We've got the gap ahead to uh, Matsushita as reference. So let's see how that gap comes down because those guys are at the back of the DRS train. So let's start pushing and get to work straight away some purple sectors. Let's see what kind of pace we've set on these tyres then. First lap done on the fresh inters across the line. And it's a 51-0 purple sector 3. Not quite fast fastest lap, but still a 1.7 second improvement on my personal best. I reckon there's more time in. I think our 50 is possible, so let's push on here. But definitely, this is the right call. We're gaining a couple of seconds a lap on the cars ahead, so let's keep it going. Not a good second warning for track limits. Not ideal. Hopefully, we won't get any more. Otherwise, that three-second penalty could be damaged towards us. It could hurt us quite badly, depending on where we are at the end of the race. Well, we've caught up to some of the slower cars. Admittedly, not, it's not been the kind of progress I would have liked. I was hoping for a bit more pace. Got a few cars in the pit lane though, so let's see what happens here. Currently on for a personal best. Master Shooter's going to pit and get out of my way just in time. Let's see what this lap is across the line. Got a yellow flag at turn one as we... Oh no. Ooh, that's not good. We've got a delta now. 
cars leaving the pits. This is going to hurt us quite badly. Come on, Delta. Okay, we're out ahead of Leclerc. Ricardo as well. So we have jumped some cars. I think we may have just done enough. We'll find out at the end of the lap. Uh, we did set a personal best at 150.7. I don't think it was the fastest lap, though. Right, let's see what happens then at the end of the lap with the safety car once it finishes. Oh, Hamilton's out of the race. Oh, my God. We're going to pass him right now, but Hamilton, for the championship, that is huge. Hamilton out of the race. Let's George drive past now. Let's see what happens here. There he is on the left-hand side. Hamilton out of the Belgian Grand Prix. That is massive. Oh, boy. And we've got cars in the pit lane then. I was red on the Delta when the Delta disappeared, so... I don't know if I'll get in trouble for that, but... We'll find out either way. Cars in the pits, let's push and see if we can... Gain some places. P8 right now. Anything else? Okay, P8 for us. Just behind Russell, so... I don't mind that. That's not a bad recovery. And we're kind of at the front. Most of the cars that were in that train are behind us. And me and George are both in the point, so... That's decent enough. I'm happy with that. Okay, safety car in this lap. I've been cruising under the safety car, trying to put minimal tire wear on my tires, but my tires are freezing cold, so we need to get a bit of temp in, and now we're going to use them a little bit, see if we can get some warmth in them, because they're pretty cold. Easy with the back end, let's not make any mistakes. But literally, the tires are stone cold, so I'm going to have to work them quite hard here, just to try and get some temperature in. Just keep working them. And there we go, now we've got some temperature, now we can work. Well, let's see how this restart goes then. We're going to have a disadvantage of about 20%-ish tyre wear. Compared to the AI who are on fresh inters. So we'll see if we can make it work. It's going to be interesting. P8 is not good enough, so we need more than P8 this race. So we need to keep pushing to try and get some places back. So let's see how the race resumes and what kind of pace the AI run at. I'm not expecting to be super fast. The AI are pretty decent, and obviously we've cleared the cars with damage from the first in, so the guys ahead of us should be pretty fast. So let's see what happens on this restart. Okay, that's good. So the club behind will start to drop off a little bit. That will just take some pressure off me. I am struggling right now, though, at least this very moment, because the AI are running full power. Maybe once they turn the engines down after this kind of safety car restart, which they usually do, um, pace-wise, we'll be a little bit closer. But right now, I'm not really there yet, so... Yeah, it looks like the McLarens are really fast. Norris up in P6 and Carlos Sainz up in P4. Uh, McLaren seem very strong, but right now, I don't really have an answer to the pace. So, it could be P8 at this race. Oh, my God. Ooh. Yeah, I think it's going to be 8th place for us today. I don't really have a response. Ricardo behind putting some decent pressure on here, so we're going to have to try and defend from the Aussie. But right now, this isn't uh, what I had in mind, but that's part of the consequence of pitting so early. Had I known we were going to get a safety car, I probably wouldn't have pit. Also, the safety car screwed me over. Had there not been a safety car, we probably would have been even higher than P8, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. We just need to try and hold on now to the end of the race and maybe hope for something go away in terms of luck. Uh-oh. That's not good. I tried to commit for a rouge a bit more didn't really work so we're going to be holding on for a point here if we finish where we are right now this ain't what i had in mind what a disaster of a race overall it hasn't worked out the safety car has ruined my race without a doubt which is a real shame well i've responded with a personal best 150.3 that's a pretty solid lap i'm just trying to push now to stay ahead of kofiat's three seconds it's going to be tricky because the ai are going to go for another push soon with their ers and full engine modes towards the last lap so it's going to be tough to say ahead of Kvyat, but I'll try my best. No, I think it's game over. Kvyat is pushing like crazy. Gap is down to 2.3. I don't think I'm going to clear that. He's only going to get faster. And you can see, with Bottas' fastest lap, that's confirmation that the AI are starting to push again now. They're running full engine modes, so everyone's pushing. I don't think we're going to get this. I think we'll struggle to get into the points, because Kvyat is dragging a Ferrari along with him. So it may not even be points today. We're about to find out where we're going to finish. I'm trying to push. Personal best, Sector 2. We've managed to get fuel on target as well. Now we're just going to drain the battery, but I think it's too late. I think it's going to be P11 for us, unless the AI massively drop off in this final sector by some sort of a miracle. 
We're out of ERS already. Full commitment into the bus stop. Chicane to give it everything. But the tyres are going. The rears have had enough. Yeah, it's game over. I think it's not even going to be points today. The Mercedes team pulled out a fantastic performance today. They should be proud. Tell me, Ant, how do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? Without a doubt, the safety car changed everything today. The key to their success was keeping calm and reacting to the situation quickly. We've seen teams in the past throw away wins because they were too hesitant, but here they were decisive and that's allowed them to take the advantage. So after a magnificent race, we can now see the drivers making their way to the podium. Once again, it's the Silver Arrows who take top spot, a well-earned victory for Mercedes. Well, the results are in, guys. We managed to secure a point and keep Verstappen at bay. So a small consolation, a small positive, but still... In the grand scheme of things, not a great race here today as Bottas picks up 25 points. Gasly picks up 19 due to a fastest lap and Albon P3. So uh, Red Bull Mercedes having a great day at the office here today. Um, elsewhere, George Russell P7. Good race from him. Good points. Good finish. And then, of course, further down towards the bottom, the big news, Lewis Hamilton DNFing from the race along with Esteban Ocon. So we look at the standings and after the season break, we return to Spa. We still lead the championship, but we are equal on points with Valtteri Bottas. Bottas. Obviously, that goes back on count back to the fact I have more race wins than Valtteri this year. But we are dead even heading into the final, I believe, five races of the season. Um, Gasly P3 for Red Bull. Oh, sorry, P4 for Red Bull behind Hamilton is P3. So Hamilton hasn't lost too much today because I only scored one point. He's still an outsider. Uh, but Gasly getting himself back in the mix a little bit. And then there's quite a bit of a gap to Albon and Co. So I think they're a bit too far back. Uh, George still P7, but, you know, he's equal in points with Lando Norris. And then in the constructors, we are second, but the gap to Mercedes has grown to 77 points. And I'll be honest, the mission and the target this year was to secure the constructors championship. And I'm not feeling so confident anymore. But anyway, we're going to move to the upgrades and see what we can do heading into the final races of the season. Well, after that race, Bottas takes a massive step towards winning the rivalry. And to be fair, I think it's impossible mathematically now. So... Fair play to Valtteri, he's done a good job, he's really turned it around in the championship and also, you know, in the driver rivalry, he's been pretty dominant. We do level up to level 16 on driver acclaim, but that doesn't really mean much at this stage. Well, it's a short turnaround until the next race in Monza, and I can confirm all of the upgrades have arrived onto the car. So, as you can see in the progress tab, we've got nothing in the works. It seems like Red Bull have brought some upgrades of their own. Uh, we're going to move, though, into developments. Now, we've got 2,000 points to spend and looking at the options that we have, I feel like I want to go for this um, upgrade here, which is for engine power. We can just afford it, literally only just. It's outright engine power. We have slipped away a little bit in terms of the performance ranks on that side. So we're going to go ahead, get that on the car, and fingers crossed it will arrive. It should do after the Italian Grand Prix. So we'll have it on the car for Japan, and that will give us a big step in the right direction. So yeah, that's going to be it for us here today, guys. In this episode, we're going to skip ahead to the next race in Monza. And yeah, pretty much our mid-season struggles continue. Hopefully, we can turn it around, guys, in the next race weekend because we need some points. So we'll see what happens. Either way, if you enjoyed today's episode, leave a like, subscribe for more content like this on my channel. As always, a big shout out to the members of the channel for supporting the content. And finally, if you haven't done so already, guys, check out the two videos on screen if you have missed them. But that is it from me here today, and I'll see you guys next time.